uh, midweek Wednesday, the ninth day in the month of September 2020. Well, of course, it is also the ninth month of the year, so we can say 9 9 2020. Welcome to the platform. It is the pinnacle of all discussions right here on Flow 94.9 FM, the flow of God's own state. Of course, we take a look at critical issues as this affect our dear nation Nigeria and also as it affect our dear state Abia State every Monday, every Wednesday and also every Friday right here on the flow of God's own state. Flow 94.9 FM. My name is Michael Oni. Now this morning, let's uh, go to some national issues. Uh, there was uh, this retreat, uh, ministerial performance retreat that ended yesterday. And uh, President Muhammad Buhari made some comments. Of course, it's been generating a whole lot of reactions. We're waning on that this morning, where the president rated his administration in the area of delivering democracy to Nigerians. Uh, the president stated that his government has done better with fewer resources right from 2015 you're going to listen to the exact uh, words uh, used by the president uh, very soon but the president called on nigerian elite to judge his leadership style with nothing but fairness that according to president muhammad buhari he gave his administration a pat on the back during his speech at the first year ministerial performance review retreat that was held in abuja of course the retreat ended yesterday he claimed that his government has done quite well in comparison with past administration with fewer resources based on the, based on this the president called on nigerian elite to judge his leadership style and delivery of democracy with fairness he reminded fellow citizens you and i that from 1999 to 2014 the average production of oil in the country was uh, 2.1 million barrels per day which was sold at an average price of 100 dollars so he said when we came i'm, I'm quoting him it collapsed to 35 dollars uh, 37 dollars 38 dollars barrel you know it and the militants were unleashed on the administration and the production went down to half a million barrels per day I want you to please reflect what was the condition of the infrastructure then in spite of those earnings the roads the rail is dead and there was no power up till now no power where does the money go this is coming at a time that many nigerians are saying well the timing of the removal of subsidy is not so good that we should not have hike in price of petrol right now the premier motor spirit we should not have hike in uh electricity tariff and the president is alleging that elites are unfair in their assessment of his administration so that is what we're taking a look at this morning while urging his ministers and cabinet to go on the offensive and punch up perceived bad narratives by the opposition you heard him speak there exactly um uh, those exact words uh, used uh, by president muhammad buhari uh, that was uh after the retreat, uh, during the retreat, the retreat ended yesterday. Of course, uh, those are one of the things we will be taking a look at. The president also reiterated that he inherited a weak structure that was corrupt. So these are some of the issues raised. Uh, of course, you know, rating administration, the president rated himself. It can be very subjective. So we will be very, very careful also this morning. So let's go straight to uh, the conversation this morning. I have uh, joining me a public affairs analyst and, of course, uh, the former secretary to the Abia state government. Uh, uh, he's a senior. He's also a journalist, uh, Chief Rafegu. He's a regular on the program. Chief, good morning to you. All right, I think I have issues with the volume right now. All right, All right. Chief, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing Okay, you. it's better now. Good morning to you, Chief. Yes, thank you. Thank Great. you, Michael. Good, and good. thank you, listeners. Yeah, I'm sure you're aware it's been on the pages of newspapers this morning. In fact, uh, the front pages of most of the national dailies today where the president uh, alleged that the elites are unfair in their assessment of his administration and went on uh, to... a uh, to compare what he met and of course to the present situation in the country what do you think what do you make of the president's uh, uh, statement yesterday well sometimes uh, having been in government myself i know mm -hmm. that there are prob there could be problems of uh, your thought and of course what is written for you to 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 read there could be a distance between the two 
and uh, the second point will be um, it is commonplace to want to discountenance uh, statistics okay and to insist and to insist on uh your vision uh those things can come into judgment and it's difficult to say that uh, you have run into a storm it is circumstances and perhaps observers who are in a better position to say uh that the sky is clear or that the storm is extremely very cloudy every pilot will say i'm in command until the inevitable so that is how i see that aspect but, but, but looking at the economic realities uh, chief and judging by the departure uh, departure point in 2015 for president muhammad buhari do you think the elites have been unfair in their judgment of his government that is exactly the point i was trying to make it's oh, not okay. about elite it's not about elite judgment it's about what is the reality on the ground it's about uh what 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 actually are we doing and what can be done better it's not just about elites elites don't write yes they will make comments well, well the president went on to list some some of his achievements work at is ongoing at the second niger bridge at 46 percent he went on to talk about uh he spoke about the legacy Baden railway which is working abuja kaduna rail and also some other uh, capital projects so he's saying elites they've not been fair with their judgment and of course i uh, went on to you know uh, urge his uh, ministers and the cabinet to go on and of course puncture those perceived uh, bad narratives about the opposition uh, about uh, by the opposition well i think it's more about government and life and processes mm. okay it's not about uh, a one directional thing when you talk about now even administration you talk about the structure you talk about the sense of belongingness now let's begin you we are running the federal system not so now look at the composition what does that tell you does it give you a sense of uh, uh holistic inclusivity it creates problems that will create problems of legitimacy on his own when you come and you elevate cronyism it will create problems anywhere be it a local government state or even federal like we see that is the first point the government must be handed over to the people they must see themselves in it so the cries of uh, people feel today that uh, uh we are more marginalized today than we were yeah, so okay. when you when you remove nigerians they allow you that is one now but if you want us to be specific it's not even about finances to the nation it uh, is about things that touch first and foremost the basic the daily living of uh, uh the people and uh, uh, uh society the basic livings now you say fuel went down but we 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 we, we paid it was 80 something naira by 2015 2020 we are paying 100 and uh, in some places 160 naira now if you know the correlation in terms of uh, rising hardship you know what we are talking about in an economy that is shrinking in an economy that is shrinking at uh, during the during 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 the past era it was being managed in such a way that you could see some sense of uh, sensitivity but now the economy is going down and fuel is a common denominator in the sense that any slight thing that touches fuel in terms of upward movement would have a corresponding effect on the people and this is at a time of job losses so that is why we, 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 the, the the commentaries will never be favorable so it's never essentially about doing road yes in some aspects i have i spoke about his achievement before i was going by in agri i was going high in efforts to change infrastructure but again any government that leaves the human side to dwell on the mechanical will also have a bad report people must leave to use what you you are creating figures mm. on employment is fact is frightening even from government statistics it says 38 percent rise in unemployment and we know it's more than that if we were to take what we see inflation is rising well, well the president reiterated that he inherited a weak structure that was uh, corrupt well yes uh, you, you can say you can say but you see when you like the lawyers say you uh you is it probate and reprobate i mm -hmm. hope i'm probate and re 
go forward. So you create a problem. Recuperate. Good. Now we, we 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 must give it to him. There is a will, but it didn't start with him. The other people he will accuse started anti-corruption moves and all that. So mm -hmm. he came with a much more vigor. But again, you see, you see, there is a gap. It's a kind of dissonance. You are saying this is not good, but the team you have selected, what we hear and tend to see, wants to make nonsense of uh, of the drive. So he came on a three, three plank. Let's join him on three plank. He says security. Is Nigeria safer today than it was maybe during Jonathan's era or before? In fact, you are seeing a kind of brazenness. I'm not criticizing him. If, okay. it, if he had woken up security, he had woken up to say some of the things I'm hearing from Suatan a few days ago. He said, the killings in Southern Kaduna must stop. That is it. Not, not, not the governor saying eh, it's about communities. They are struggling for land. Some of the things you see is represent. criminality is criminality, especially when it touches life. It must be abhorrent. All right. Uh, what's so the when, when the president says President Bush, Bush is asking you because it's embarrassing that you have soldiers, you have uh, security, and then people enter and then kill one day kill the next day kill one week kill and it becomes a continuous thing no arrest is made so okay. that's the issue when you take that on security you say when you count for the number nigerians have lost more lives hmm. under this civil at, uh, atmosphere than we did uh, in other serious crisis we have had uh, if you put them right. together uh, uh, but, i know uh, the civil war chief rafi so, what is the way forward now you've highlighted some of the problems and of course uh, exactly where we got it wrong what is the way forward let's uh, uh factor out a solution the, to some the of way this forward problems, is that sir. the nigerian government must be handed over to the to nigerian people mm. by that what i'm saying every the, each irrespective of the party that we including the party has three years to go sit down and re-engineer your administration and let every part find their best brain in government all right then then go back and draw up a vision now you have come three years to the end of an administration you say i am another nine point agenda and i hate these agenda things these are things you do before you enter office but let's say you have entered three years is a lot of time find time to spend six hours with eggheads and come out with a clear direction say in education we will produce five universities that will compete in the first hundred in the world you put money you say we'll create five uh, general referral centers across the zones five i said do all of them you say five you put in money put in doctors restructure the place and they can serve and then those against the medical tourism all right you say you uh, say uh, infrastructure you look at the cost and let the cost i'm beginning to hear uh ethiopia just day before yesterday the commission an airport that you will say is the best in the world compare ethiopia and nigeria all right and then you compare uh, amount being spent in our on, on our facilities and so on, on what they do in togo with what they do in kenya what do so let's sit down and re-engineer carry okay, everybody uh, along you can you can score uh, all right yes. all right chief I, I want to i really appreciate your time this morning for joining us this morning on the platform on flow 94.9 fm thank you very much chief thank you god bless you thank you all right uh, that's uh chief uh, rafegu joining us uh, on the platform this morning and of course uh we're moving on with the conversation on the platform we have uh, someone joining us all the way from enugu uh barrister crownwell chibuza a public affairs analyst of course a legal practitioner barrister good morning to you very good morning good morning my name is michael Oni, and uh, you're live on flow 94.9 fm welcome to the platform all right uh, barrister the present administration promised uh, to at least get the refineries working but as has not happened today the country is battling with unstable economy what exactly is the message when the president accused the elites of judging him fairly uh, of judging him unfairly rather well thank you so much um, the first issue i'd like to look at is the preparedness of our leaders before they mount positions of leadership i do not think that leaders especially in the current sphere of uh, governance in nigeria actually took time to study or research into nigeria as a nation its prospects and challenges otherwise it would have been a situation of every situation we come to they will have an answer to it based on a study 
done before governance but it appears that our governance here is a representative one where people just come on board to represent people you know from where they come from and that has led us to the issue of governance of prebendalism you know people of ethnic group or social group friends and all that rather than discuss the general you know issues of the nation the second issue i'd like to look at is the issue of perception of okay. the government yes you know the perception of the government how how do nigerians perceive the government the government is looking at nigeria as there's a mutual suspicion on the side of government and the people on account of how things are done for instance if you look at how our policies emerge how laws are made you know citizens are crying that issues that are refused rejected at the point of debate still find their ways into our laws the policies that people are shouting don't do eventually get implemented by the same government so the government is suspecting the people the people are also very suspicious of the same government then the third issue that has led to that confusion is is the contraction of the civil space the civil space has actually been contracted that people do no longer have views and the few of us who have views are being chased around from one point to the other and government is now left with what it wants to do then when it now does that alone then people will not understand the background upon which those things are happening mm. and they are not happy about that so they also have a right in law on section 14 to uh, see that the people should participate in their own government and if they don't participate in their own government they have a right to react that is not the way we want it and yes yeah, the pandemic is all over is a global yeah, issue uh, but nigeria should be able to sit down and say this is the way we want to move interesting i, I was going to ask you about uh, how the economy also affected uh, uh how the global meltdown covid 19 also affected the economy but the president is saying that the elites they've not been fair on him and uh, saying well uh, th there is a bad narration comparing what happened how he started in 2015 and what we have on ground right now but uh, again nigeria has remained a monoproduct economy has this helped us it hasn't helped us and perhaps was why we have the economic growth and uh, uh, something plan that the government designed but the truth is not is that it is not working it is one thing to develop a plan it is another thing to actualize that plan for instance if nigeria actually under this government is realistic is willing to run in the lines of you know finding other means of revenue for instance of, of course our gdp is run by 3.5 percent mm. the, the the vat pool is increasing the fuel is increasing the electricity has increased by people whose minimum wage have not also been increased by people whose children fees have also increased how are they going to now make all of these things and you are giving palliative but we're not giving incentives even for people to do the work they are doing and manufacturing and all that so i think that we have not deliberately moved diversify the economy let me just put it that way because if we truly want to diversify the economy in the southeast you have huge deposit of coal and you can find it in more than 14 states as we speak in britain people still use it mm. in america people still use coal why is it that we are not using our own even to fire our plants and all that unlike gas that people can stop break by niger delta still you it is not it's difficult to steal coal, de coal deposits as they're being conveyed and all that but because of the politics of nigeria they won't want to do those kind of things that we give the south east that opportunity to begin to form another range of the hub of the economy of the nation and that's why we are not doing it there are other things that could be done outside oil that we are not encouraging today uh, uh, okay. so and that has left us with fuel as as the nigeria as a mono economy and is a challenge okay uh, despite the president not mentioning this particular one yesterday during that retreat uh, uh, when he rated his administration uh, well another area that uh, the president muhammad buhari's uh, uh, administration has been clamoring on is the issue of corruption and it's been uh, one of the major uh, points of the president uh, the fighting corruption but i don't know how 
you want to rate this administration in terms of uh, management and judicious application of available resources how proactive has this administration been uh, in the management and judicious application of available resources barrister well the, the truth is that if you read a lot of international reports on mm. nigeria you will discover that corruption has actually not abated what what has happened is that persons who have opposing voices have been attacked with a sample of persons on the other side who are just used as a demonstration you know still creating avenues for them to escape at the end of the day just to justify what is happening we have not democratized we have not democratized our corruption practice our corruption practice is still tailored through political lines to fight corruption in any nation in the process must be democratized mm. such that people in their local government people in their states people at different levels should be the drivers of corruption government should not be the one to appoint who to be investigated mm. and who to be allowed to go free if he moves from one political party to the other mm. and government should not be in position to shield persons who are friends and relatives not minding how people shout about them so it's a challenge so there's this mentality that if you are corrupt and you change your political party then you mm. receive a baptism of repentance politically yeah. and your sins are forgiven so we cannot win war against corruption in that manner all right uh, barrister crownwell chibu's a legal practitioner and public affairs uh, analyst thank you very much uh, for joining us on the platform this morning on flow 94.9 fm thank you it's been nice talking with you you're welcome all right uh, you heard barrister that's another perspective especially as we're focusing on uh, president muhammad bahari's uh, administration the president rated his administration yesterday of course that's uh, has been the center of uh, discussion this morning on the platform right here on flow 94.9 fm now uh, let's move on now well let's talk about uh, uh, some other issues raised by President Muhammad Buhari uh, during the retreats yesterday. Well, the president uh, said uh, the United States president accused him of killing Christians in Nigeria. Anyways, we are going to take the conversation further. Uh, we're trying to connect uh, a, univers a university lecturer who is also a public affairs analyst. But President Muhammad Buhari revealed that at the heat of the bloody clashes between headsmen and farmers in Nigeria, the United States President Donald Trump once asked him why he was killing Christians. This was just as the President charged uh, ministers and other top uh, government officials to go on offensive in, defensive, in defending the administration and its achievements. Now, at a point, the President digressed from his prepared speech and narrated his encounter with uh, uh, President Trump on the bloody clashes. He said, he managed to explain to the American leader that the clashes were not about ethnicity or religion. Now, I'm going to I'm going to quote the president. Now, I believe I was only about the I believe I was about the only African among the less developed countries. The president of the United States invited when I was in his office. Only myself and uh, himself. Only God is my witness. He looked at me in the face and he asked. Why are you killing Christians? I wondered if you were the person, how you will react. I hope what I was feeling inside did not betray my emotion. So I told him that the problem between the cattle and the stagnant farmers I know is older than me, not to talk of him. I know I am a couple of years older than him. With climate change and population growth and the culture of the cattle if you have 50 cows and they eat grass, any roots, to your water point then they will follow it it doesn't matter whose farm it is the first republic set of leaders was the most responsible leadership we ever had i mean the minister of agriculture to get a gazette of the early 60s which delineates the cattle route where they used uh, uh, major resources than to put earth dams windmills even the sanitary departments at Flow 94.9 FM, we've got conducive and well-secured environment for business. High-tech video studio, a state-of-the-art production studio. You can also listen live on www.flow949fm.com and watch our videos on YouTube at Flow FM TV. 
Flow 94.9 FM, not just radio, but a complete broadcasting house. All right, it is still the platform. So I, I, I was quoting uh, the president uh, just a couple of minutes ago. So uh, we'll continue from where I stopped. So, uh, so any cattle rearer that allowed his cattle to go to somebody's farm would be arrested, taken before the court. The farmer would be called to submit his bill, and if he couldn't pay, the cattle would be sold. But subsequent leaders, the VVVIPs, that's the very, very important persons, encroached okay encroached on the cattle routes they took over the cattle rearing area so i tried and explained to president trump that this has got nothing to do with ethnic ethnicity or religion it is a cultural thing in asking government officials to defend his administration the president also said that they should ensure that they stop the spread of what he called irresponsible and politically motivated statement against uh, the administration. Now, I think we have uh, uh, Dr. Oke Nwachuku now. Uh, doctor, hello, can you hear me, Doctor? Good morning, um, okay, Mr. Oni. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. uh, welcome to the platform right here on Flow 94.9 FM. It's my pleasure. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, great. Okay. I, I want to believe that you have followed the discussion. W what are those good things that you think uh, the so-called elites according to mr president are not seen in this administration oh goodness i think i lost the connection again i will get back to doctor right okay it is still the platform right here on flow 94.9 fm uh the, okay we have hello him. I'm, uh, yes I'm, doctor I'm, I'm, I'm back online. okay great did you get the question yes oh, I, all right i've been following your discussions okay i want to say that uh, uh the president says yesterday mm. my opinion is right because uh, if you have actually done well and uh, you you don't have problem telling people that you have done well and uh, even though the president might not have solved all the problems of nigeria but he made a very serious uh, uh, speech if you recall uh, when the president took over power in 2015 uh nigeria under the previous uh, leaders had mm. the opportunity to address the challenges of nigeria when oil is sold above a hundred dollar and there was over 2.4 million barriers production per day and then you begin to question what did the previous administrations do the issue of power the issue of road mm. you have a clear you know uh, uh, example in this case the enugu Court road we had administrations in the past that failed to do these roads and uh, under this present administration the road is almost uh, uh, completed you had the issue of the niger uh, the second niger bridge we kept you know having this issue of niger uh, uh, second niger breed as a campaign uh, uh, a slogan for political parties particularly the the, the 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 ruling party at the time what happened did they were they able to achieve you know uh, uh, build the bridge or achieve such a, 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 a campaign promise no way so it is it, it's, it's possible that the president has not solved all the problems of nigerians and of course it will not be a happenstance you don't expect in just five years for the president to address all the challenges of this country it's not possible nobody does that so he i want to believe has done well in the area of infrastructure and i want to i want nigerians to give it to him in fact some few days ago i i i received a call somebody telling me that having traveled to Enugu and back that he feels that Buhari has done something mm. this is somebody who is not uh, 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 from the north he's somebody from the southeast so we want to we, we, are you going to talk about the 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 the, the wrong way and uh, but maybe the, the the Enugu airport that was just commissioned you know you know so the, I want to believe that the president has actually done well in some areas maybe not all the areas because it's okay. only the messiah it's only jesus christ that will solve the whole problems of mankind you know so that has accusation you think it is uh, correct when the president accused the elites of judging him unfairly 
Yeah, you see, you see, you see, you see, it, many things are politicized. You see, when a political party is out of government, they want to use the issues that, that are, you know, inherent in the system to campaign or to destroy another person's image or the effort of another leader. Uh, 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 yeah, the, 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 if, if you have gone round, you will see that there's a lot of clamor. I'm not saying that there's no hardship, but when you, if you want to examine what the level of hardship in this land, you have to go back down memory lane to find out what actually happened in the past. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So if the previous administrations have not done well, there's no way we can run away from the challenges we are facing today. Okay. All right. So, so, so the the fact that people are complaining that there is uh, 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 unemployment, that there's the, there's no power. Of course, when the president speeches, he, he he still acknowledged that the issues of power has not been solved even by his administration. But you know how many billions of dollars has been injected into the power sector? Okay, in the past. So, so the the the, the fact the fact remains that. Uh, the president has done well and we Nigerians must encourage him but then that does not mean that he has done well in all areas all right doctor i hope you understand my point uh, I, I got you correctly but i will have to yeah. let you go because we need to get a reactions also uh from the listener before we wrap up the program this morning thank it you is, it is my pleasure only and uh, your thank team thank, thank you, thank you so very much, much uh, dr oken wachuku uh, for being part of the platform this morning okay uh for you to be a part of the conversation this morning you know the lines but then uh, for those joining for the first time the lines are still very much the same 0808-182-6949 or 0811-605-2949 you can also drop messages on 0906-510-8289 hello good morning to you you're welcome. Welcome to the platform. Who's the manager? I'm coming from Omaha. All right. Michael, I will always tell people that any foundation that is laid on lies will never stand the test of time. And it is very, very difficult for Mr. President to be a, a CJN on his own on his own case. You can't be a judge over your own case. And if you, if you, if you understand, both of us, me and you, and everyone in Nigeria knows what we are suffering under the watch of Mr. President and his party. And the last call is just trying to tell us that uh, we, the, the express Papa Cotton's failure to start uh, Niger Bay for, for the 6%. The general administration started Papa Cotton's express road, which it was even done 60% before they took over. Five years out, they've not done anything. The same way in Niger, Niger Bay started um, um, Niger Bridge. They're not telling us that they, uh, you know that these people squandered. Are we talking about the killing that is going on on daily basis? Are we talking about the untold hunger, hunger and, and hardship that these guys are inflicting on Nigeria? They're not telling us that uh, 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 their followers should be evangelizing us, telling people about the good ones. Which good ones? Which good ones might have only look at what uh, developed countries today? The fact that they are still paying their citizens. Americans, UK, all the world, many Germany, England, they are just helping their citizens. Yeah, right, quickly, Why are all president and the party is trying to save more? Ask for the deal that they are not going to Which, which, may God forbid this government. Thank you. No, no such is not a, a allowed. Such statements are not allowed. It is very, very important. We abide by the rules, okay? Thank you. 0808 182 6949 or 0811. Six zero five two nine four nine. Hello, good morning to you. Hello, good morning. Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, my name is Michael. I'm coming from Ezemai Bay. Oh, great, Michael. Namesake. All right. Yeah. Um, I want to say that uh, the president has not done anything. You cannot just tell me that you you be the judge of your own case. If this president has done a lot. We citizens are the ones to say he does this, he does that. You shouldn't be the one telling us that he has done enough. When you have a, well, maybe when you have a agenda for the masses, you shouldn't come out and begin to tell people that you know your minister should defend you or whatever. Your action should be the one defending you. Thank you and have a lovely day. All right, thank you for your contribution. We've got messages also on the SMS line. Noble, 
from Umar here says, To me, Mr. President's statement yesterday was without policy statement. Uh, rather, it was full of blame and uh, self-praise. That's coming from Noble uh, from Umar here. 0808 or 0811 Also, drop messages on 906 so uh, the president uh, alleged that the elites are unfair in their assessment of his administration we've got someone on the line hello good morning to you hello gentlemen good morning you're welcome my name is martin Meriba. i'm calling from Omar. all right martin my brother what i want to say about self-praise is not good what you have done shall indicate people to say one thing or good of you. Not you telling us to blow prom, uh, trumpets for you. This administration has they started in blame game. Up to now, nothing. He's telling us about the uh, uh, natural resources that God gave, uh, gave to us. Oh, yeah. Why can't they justify the, the economy? Is it only oil that we base and then think of of, of moving moving ahead in this country? Other countries that are developed today, they do they do they they are creative. They are creative in their in their in their system. It's our own. We believe in a certain oil, a certain gold. Any ebe gra guru here tap or tomorrow you get good to also. That is my question. And again, what I want to say. Telling us to blow prom, uh, trumpets for uh, for his uh, for his uh, 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 his administration or uh, what he has achieved. What has he achieved? Uh, is that the killings in the north? Uh, this morning I heard over the air that uh, 910 schools was burned down by Boko Haram. That is what we are blowing trumpets for. Uh, 600 and something uh, teachers were killed in the, uh, in the north. That is what we are blowing trumpets for. Is that the right? We are buying uh, six thousand, right, seven thousand. Now that, it's yeah. about thirty-two thousand, thirty-five thousand. The oil increase, in, increase the uh, power increase. What are we blowing trumpets for? They should not be deceiving us. We are all human beings. Right, we have brain as they have. Thank you Any for your contribution. We as a balloon. Every place we are with the all right thank you very much for your contribution uh 0808 we still have uh, time to get more reactions on the phone lines yes uh, we do uh 0811 hello good morning to you hello yes you're welcome uh, my name is Ozo Menafis. i'm calling from Amma Hashi. all right Ozo Mena. those people lamenting federal government we have said the apc has said or whatever they are all states that have fared woefully what, have they been able to raise issue on that? See, let me t- let me tell. I'm not a friend of Buhari for anything, but for the man have gathered courage to fix Enugu Potak uh, Express Road that PDP has failed us from 1999 is something that we shall, must be applauded to him. Honestly speaking. All right. Is, is that your talk? Okay. Thank you for your take. I uh, will take it one more call. Uh, that we call it a day on the program, the platform on Flow ninety four point nine FM, the pinnacle of all discussions, and of course uh, we return on Friday for the last edition of the program. Hello. Good morning to you. Hello. Good morning. Yes, you're welcome. My good morning. Yes. Good morning to you. What's your name? How are you? I'm fine. My name is. My name is Okay. I'm calling from Amuka, Russia. Mr. Undo, you have to make it very brief uh, because of the time. Yes. Okay. In fact, with all evidence, anyone that tells the truth will tell you that this government has failed us. They told us that when they enter, when this government takes over, there will be no Boko Haram again. But Boko Haram is in the street, stealing all over. In fact, we cannot buy rice now. Is it swell? My colony, you know you are here. There is evidence everywhere. It is said that what you buy by your hand, you don't need any mirror to look at it. If you walk close 
and people are dying, people are not living. Who will walk, who will drive on that road? This government is worse than any other government will have had. Let it not press himself. He has not done well. All right, uh, let's take messages uh, quickly before we step out of the studio. Martina from Obo says, Mr. President should allow Nigerians to judge him. Let him stop praising himself. Um, Mr. President has tried in some areas, uh, but he has failed in some in the area of security and power. Uh, Father Chris from Umar here. Uh, the president has done nothing but hardship on the citizens. All the projects he claimed to have done were all started by the past administration uh, that's your opinion anyways uh, that's coming from uc all right thank you very much for being part of the program the program returns on friday when we take uh, a look at uh, issues critical look at issues as it affect our dear nation nigeria and also affect uh, our dear state abia state many thanks for being part and uh, many thanks to the producer of the program he's actually the brain behind the program samson Eze. my name is michael oni